Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the April edition of uh, Tubular Connections. I'm your host, Brad Fletcher from Atlas II, uh, Senior Sales Engineer at Atlas II. Uh, you know, here I find myself at the end of week four of uh, working from home during this COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, first of all, I want to send out some positive thoughts uh, to everyone out there and hope you're staying safe and healthy uh, as well as staying busy. Uh, you know, be sure to follow the CDC recommendations and the guidance of your local jurisdiction as, in regards to, to staying healthy and safe. You know, stay at home, practice your social distancing. Uh, even if you're in a state that's been slow to adopt these policies, it's a great idea uh, to, to really stick close to these to these guidelines. Uh, here in Illinois, we've been under a stay at home order for quite some time now, and we are starting to see some things uh, slow down, hopefully a flattening of the curve. So uh, knock on wood right now, we're, we're hoping to, to see a uh, hopefully the end of this uh, pretty soon. Uh, one thing things I want you to know today is that Atlas Tube and, and all the divisions of, of Zuckerman Industries have been up and running uh, during this time period. Uh, we are continuing in our role as the leading manufacturer of steel and pipe, uh, steel pipe and tubular products in North America. Uh, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we're here to stay and we will be here when you need us. Uh, as part of the steel industry, we've been deemed as an essential business for the critical infrastructure of both Canada and the U.S. Our products are used in all kinds of critical industries, critical infrastructure, uh, bridges, hospitals, medical supplies, bed frames, things like that, uh, and a myriad of products that are critical to the ongoing function and success of our businesses and our countries. You know, these are trying times, uh, but our entire Atlas team is dedicated, as always, to be the best in the business. You know, so to that end, uh, our production facilities are up and running uh, and we are doing our best to meet the, the needs of our customers. Along the same lines, the, the sales and marketing functions are also still in full force. Our outside sales, our inside sales teams, uh, they're still active, they're taking orders. Uh, we of course are all working from home. Uh, it is an interesting time to be in sales, of course. Uh, there's very little personal face-to-face -face interaction going on. We're not out there shaking hands and having lunch and meeting at trade shows. Um, but that doesn't mean that, uh, that we're not busy. Our sales team is doing what we do best, uh, and that is to make it easy for our customers to get what they need to do their jobs. Now, and speaking of doing their jobs, um, while there's some variance from state to state, uh, we have found that most steel fabricators do seem to be up and running and, and working because they've been deemed essential as well. Um, so there are fabricators out there doing the work. They're putting the projects together that have already been designed. And, and uh, even though uh, construction sites have, in some places, have been shut down, I think the fabricators are still working forward here. And, and once we get up and going, the products will be ready to, to go again. Um, service centers are up and running as well, too. They're still taking orders um, to, to buy what's in stock, and they're restocking. Uh, so. You know, hopefully uh, the steel industry is going to be there uh, and be strong and robust as we go forward. So while it's not business as usual by any means, uh, we are trying our best to keep things as normal as possible. Uh, and as a lot of you know, several major conferences and trade shows like uh, the American Institute of Steel Construction's Steel Conference, uh, which was to be in Atlanta this year, as well as the American Society of Civil Engineers uh, Structures Congress in St. Louis, uh, they've all been canceled this spring. Um, Structures Congress uh, this was to be this week, and uh, they did do a virtual presence earlier in the week. And uh, AISC is uh, rolling out a virtual version of this conference as well. Uh, it will have a virtual trade show component as well. Uh, so be sure to check out Atlas's presence there. There's going to be uh, you know, all the different vendors that were going to be on the trade show floor are going to have uh, some online presence. So be sure to check that out. You can get more information at www.aisc.org slash N-A-S-C-C. And there's links there to register, links to the schedule, as well as links to the trade show components. Uh, even with that virtual presence, losing these shows has had a big impact on us here at Atlas. Uh, we have some exciting things to share with you in our, in our booth this year, uh, especially at the Steel Conference in Atlanta. Uh, where we had planned on making a very exciting announcement along with our friends at SidePlate Systems. Uh, SidePlate will still be planning a virtual unveiling of this exciting news, so do keep an eye out for that uh, when we have some more information about the links to find that uh, virtual unveiling. We will uh, provide that in our social media, so, so keep an eye out for that. 
uh, at the trade show uh, in Atlanta, AISC was to launch their new virtual reality uh, tours of uh, various steel production facilities around the country. And Aptus II was actually going to be included in that. They had prepared a uh, virtual reality tour of our facility in Blythe, Arkansas. So check out AISC's website when that's uh, up and running. Uh, you'll be able to do that. Uh, you, it, uh, there's virtual, you can do it virtual reality through a headset, or also they have uh, it's a YouTube function as well, too. So. Uh, like I said, keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you've never been in a tube mill, I think it's a, this is a, a great opportunity to, to get a sense of what it's like to be in a tube mill, as well as how HSS are actually made. Now, the other thing that uh, is done at NASCC, uh, the steel conference that AIC puts on, uh, is they have their Ideas 2 award winners uh, that have been already announced, but they'll be on display there. And um, so they were from very impressive projects. So I encourage you to check those out as well. Um, their uh, AIC webpage through their Myron Steel Construction, I believe it is. Uh, they have uh, a link to uh, the Ideas 2 winners. Uh, one of the ones I'm really, I think is uh, quite impressive is the new canopies at the Hartsfield uh, Airport in Atlanta. That was designed by HOK and fabricated by Beck Steel. And as I said, it's definitely one of my favorites. Now, that could be because Atlas did provide all the HSS for the project. So I might have a slight bias for that. but. At the end of the day, it's still a very impressive project. Um, as I said, we certainly miss interacting with all of you in person at these shows. Uh, the networking, the talking, the visiting, uh, it's, and talking about the fun and exciting things we can do with HSS. I mean, those are all things we will miss. Now, it might be a while before we're able to, chance, to have a chance to interact in person, but I do want you to know that um, I'm still available for lunch and learns. We can do them virtually. Uh, it is still important to stay on top of the newest and best information about how to design with HSS and, and how Atlas can help you with that. You know, plus, I know you guys all need the PDHs, that's, uh, so that's not going to change. So uh, we can provide you these things through presentations, through video conferencing uh, to any number of attendees uh, in your organization or your firm. So please check out our Lunch and Learn sign-up page at www.atlastube.com forward slash lunch and learns. Uh, for more info on what we are offering. You know, some have already taken advantage of this. Uh, in May, I am going to be doing a presentation to the members of the Structural Engineers Association of New Hampshire. Um, this was originally intended as an in-person dinner meeting, but we've decided uh, to do this as an online presentation rather than just cancel it. And I, I, I want to thank the organi organizers of the SEA of New Hampshire for their willingness to move forward with this and keep it uh, going as a virtual uh, meeting. Uh, if there's something like this is of interest to your firm or organization, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. You know, it really is a shame that we've had to come to a big pause in these types of activities because the year had been off to a really great start. You know, it started with some presentations uh, at the SEA of Arkansas in Little Rock uh, and to the young members group of the SEA of Colorado and Denver. Uh, that had some great interactions uh, with the engineers of Salt Lake City, Utah at the uh, Structural Engineers Association of Utah's annual conference. And I have to say, I'm always very impressed with the large number of attendees that they're able to attract to their conference. It's always usually a very successful conference. And then I was, of course, uh, very fortunate to present to the, uh, the Structural Engineer Institute uh, in Maryland, uh, their group uh, for a dinner meeting, as well as the Structural Engineers Coalition of Connecticut. Both these groups were very engaging. Uh, I had great, some, some great feedback to my presentation. And I really look forward to uh, further interactions with them. Now, looking ahead, there certainly is a lot of uncertainty. Uh, I know a lot of you are continuing to work on your current projects at home and uh, are staying pretty busy. Um, but what's coming after this? That's kind of the question that we all have to ask or wanting to ask. And the answers, of course, are tough to come by sometimes. But in talking to some of my friends at firms around the US, I know that uh, initially the work seems to be continuing. Um, if our economy remains stagnated, if our economy remains stagnated due to this lengthy stay at home order, um, you know, things could be different. Um, but I'm still optimistic. I think we'll bounce back and get back to being busy designing and building our projects pretty soon. Uh, there are, of course, a lot of articles popping up now that, uh, that are looking at revised outlooks on the construction market, the design market uh, for the remainder of the year. And so uh, I've come across these and I want to share these with you. 
John Cross, who for many years was the uh, Vice President of Market Development at AIFC, uh, recently published an article for uh, Petting House in their Petty News, their, their newsletter that goes out to uh, people who subscribe to it. And he's discussing his view of the impact of the shutdown because of this pandemic. Uh, his view of things to come as a result of this are pretty optimistic. Um, they're definitely more optimistic than we went through after the Great Recession of 2008. Uh, we know that there was a very long uh, restart to the, the economy after that, but we did have some, some good success after that. You know, according to John, construction projects uh, that were already underway and with funding uh, will likely keep going or restart quickly once we get back to work. Uh, we may not see the impact until later. So there may be, you know, the impact of this construction tends to lag a little bit behind the, the rest of the economy. So the impact to the construction industry may, you know, not be seen until a little bit later. Uh, this is good and bad. Um, he suggests the recession, you know, caused by this could be U-shaped, meaning that uh, the bottom of the U is basically the length of the shutdown. Now, um, how high the rebound goes after that will likely be affected by the length of the bottom of the U, uh, as well as you know how the general economy is affected. But you can find out more about this article uh, and learn more about what John was saying in this article by following the link provided on the Modern Steel Construction Magazine website under the news section. Uh, I also saw an article on the Building Design and Construction website that indicated that construction spending was up so far this year um, that it actually represented a high watermark for the construction industry. Uh, unfortunately, the article does also go on to say that now nearly half of the construction firms that were surveyed are starting to experience layoffs because of this pandemic. Um, so we kind of gone from fees to the famine in a rather short period of time, but I do remain optimistic that this recovery will come much quicker than in previous recessions. Uh, and so I'm hopeful that uh, we can all be back to business rather really soon. So anyway, that's just a brief look at what's going on around here at the moment. And um, my hope is that you are all busy. Uh, you're finding the positive side of these this, these times, uh, you know, working from home, spending more time with family. Uh, hopefully, like I said, you're finding the positive side of all this. Uh, please do join us for the uh, virtual NASCC event the week of April 20th. Um, like I said, there's a lot of uh, links on the AISC website. And, and also do please consider a virtual lunch and learn uh, so that we can keep you well informed about designing with HSS. Uh, if you're interested in anything that I mentioned today, I will post the links on my LinkedIn page. Uh, so do look for that. Uh, until next time, uh, this has been Tubular Connections. Uh, I've been your host, Brad Fletcher with Atlas Tube. And please stay safe and healthy out there.